Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum and the ways that we can describe them in terms of their wavelength, frequency, and energy. Um, we're not going to do any math in this part. I'm just going to give a kind of conceptual overview. And in part two of the video, we will do some math and do some calculations because math is fun. All right, so here's the electromagnetic spectrum. Here's the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. It goes from gamma, x-rays, ultraviolet, uh, this is the visible portion, this is the part we can see, infrared, IR, micro, and radio waves. So that's how we have divided it up. Now we divide it up typically when we talk about the different parts, we talk about them in terms of their wavelength. And the wavelength is given on the bottom axis of this graph in terms of meters. Okay, so the gamma rays have very short wavelengths, and as we go across the electromagnetic spectrum, the wavelength increases. Gamma rays, this is 10 to the minus 14. So that's a uh, very short wavelength. And this is 10 to the eighth. That is very long wavelength. Okay, so we move across, the wavelength increases. Now, at the top, we have the frequency. And you can see as we go across the wave, the electromagnetic spectrum from left to right, the frequency is going to decrease. That's because the frequency and the wavelength are inversely proportional to each other. As one increases, you go from left to right, the wavelength increases, you go from left to right, the frequency decreases. Okay, so in this case, we have um, uh, the wavelength and the frequency on this graph, and you can see they're inversely proportional to each other. So each part of the electromagnetic spectrum has its own frequency, has its own wavelength, and has its own energy. The thing about it that is constant is the speed, the speed at which it travels, which happens to be the speed of light. All of these things we are, are really light, okay? And light travels with 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The symbol for light is, excuse me, the symbol for the speed of light is C. It is a constant as long as we're talking about um, the speed of light in a vacuum, which for the purposes of this discussion and for most calculations, we consider it on Earth or in space, we are traveling through a vacuum as far as the speed of light goes. Okay, now let's just talk about a few of these. Okay, this is, um, again, the visible portion is right here, and this is the part that we can see. And we can see our eyes are sensitive to light from 400 to 700 nanometers. That's billions of a meter, 10 to the minus 9 meters. And for example, if light with a wavelength of 400 nanometers strikes our eyes, then we see that as purple or violet. And then as you move across here, 600 is approximately orange, and then you get up here 650, 700 nanometers, we see that as red. So those are the colors that we perceive. You can't see x-rays, you can't see um, infrared, you can't see radio waves and things like that. All you can see is a very small portion of the wavelength, excuse me, of the electromagnetic spectrum. So these are gamma rays, very short wavelength. Uh, one kind that you may be familiar with is the x-ray. And this is, this is an x-ray of somebody's knee. X-rays are used to take x-rays. Ultraviolet, that's the kind of, that's the part of electromagnetic spectrum that you put sunscreen on to protect yourself from ultraviolet radiation. And here you can see, here's somebody's hands. They didn't put their sunscreen on. They got a sunburn. Their skin was burned from the energy from ultraviolet radiation. Infrared is heat. Microwave is the kind that wave that is used to heat the food in your microwave. There are waves oscillating back and forth, which causes the water molecules to oscillate back and forth, which causes them to get heated up as they rub against each other. So that's the kind of uh, wave or the part of the spectrum that you use to cook food or pop your popcorn, microwave popcorn. What would we do without it? And then there's the radio wave. Okay, this is the very large array. It's a large array of radio telescopes. They are looking towards space to trying to find radio waves and radio signals, maybe signals from aliens in outer space or the signals that other stars are giving off. And these are, this is a picture of the very large array telescope. It is, um, was in the movie Contact with Jodie Foster, which if you've seen it, it's a good movie. If you haven't seen it, you should go out and rent it and see it. She is a radio astronomer in the movie. Okay, now I'm going to go through and talk about the different portion, the different part, different ways to describe the electromagnetic spectrum, wavelength, frequency, and energy, so that in the next part we can actually do a little math. Okay, wavelength. What is wavelength? Wavelength is just a distance measured. It's the length from one part of the wave to the same part on the next wave. 
identical part on the next wave. It's just a length. It's measured in meters. It has the symbol lambda, and the common definition is it's the distance over which the wave shape repeats. And we often measure it from crest to crest. It can be measured from trough to trough, or from this null point to this zero point, or any identical point. You can even measure it from this middle of this downslope to the middle of that downslope and you would get the same distance. It's the length of the wave. Okay, frequency. Frequency, and when you talk about the electromagnetic spectrum, we usually just say it's the number of cycles per second. It's the number of wavelengths that go by a given point in a given unit of time, and it's usually the number of cycles in a second. Okay, so this is the definition, cycles per second. It has a symbol F. Sometimes we use this Greek letter nu, but it looks like a V, so I usually use an F. The metric unit is the hertz, named after Heinrich Hertz, and one hertz is just defined as one cycle per second, one wavelength passing a given point in a second. And it can also be written, the, the way you often write it is HZ, but you can also write S to the minus one, which means one over S, which is like cycle per second, okay? And as we mentioned earlier, frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. You can see these are long red waves. These are short violet waves. And as you move down this graph, this picture, you'll notice that the wavelength is decreasing. Well, they're all traveling at the same speed, that being the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So you can imagine if all those waves were traveling across the page at the same speed, that more of the purple ones and fewer of the red ones would pass a given point because the purple ones are shorter and the red ones are longer. It takes longer for one of the red ones to pass. So therefore, as you move down the page, the, in, the frequency would be increasing. So wavelength decreases, frequency increases, and they're inversely proportional to each other. Okay? Frequency, the last thing is energy. Each part of the electromagnetic spectrum has its own energy, such as ultraviolet, which has the energy to burn your hands. In this case, energy is the energy from these light waves or these photons of light are knocking these electrons off of this metal plate in what we call the photoelectric effect, a current that is produced by photons of light, photoelectric, and a current of electricity. And the energy is usually defined as the ability to do work. Okay, it's something we use a lot. If you want to do work, you have to have energy. If you do work, you use energy. Just think of yourself pushing something across the floor, pushing something across the table. You use energy when you do that, and in order to, and when you, and when you use that energy, you're actually doing work. You're applying a force over a distance. Okay, so energy is the ability to do work. It has the symbol E. Its metric unit is the joule, named after James Prescott Joule. It can also have the unit electron volt, especially when we're talking about electrons moving through a voltage difference, all right, which we can talk about when we talk about the Bohr model and emission spectra, all right. But they are just units of energy, and they're very easy to convert from one to the other through this constant or this conversion factor, which is one electron volt equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. All right, so that's just a short overview of the electromagnetic spectrum, its parts, uh, the energy, the wavelength, and the frequency that can be used to describe each of those parts. Okay, thank you. I hope that was useful. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below.